Welcome to Monday, Thursday worship at Lutheran Church of Del Rapids. Tonight, uh, in normal times, we would be having a Seder supper with our fifth grade kids and their families uh, for the beginning for them of uh, First Communion. But tonight, in, instead, in this very unusual time, we're going to be talking together about our understanding of what Holy Communion is for us, uh, particularly as Lutherans. Uh, we'll use Luther's small catechism for that. Uh, so kind of a primer as well for adults and those of us who have been receiving communion for some time. And we're also going to be introducing uh, to you, for you, uh, sacraments in a time of emergency uh, so that we are prepared and a resource has been uh, made available to you for Holy Communion in your homes in this time. Please um, join us and be safe. Welcome again to our Monday 
Thursday worship. Monday, Thursday is that night before Jesus was betrayed and on Good Friday was crucified and three days later rose again to new life for us here in the midst of Holy Week. As I said, normally we would be meeting with our families, with our fifth graders, but tonight an introduction to you, uh, for you, of sacraments in a time of emergency and some reflections from Martin Luther's small catechism on the meaning of Holy Communion. That resource can be found in your April newsletter on the back page. Uh, it's prepared by our South Dakota Synod Bishop Constanza Hegmeyer along with um, the ELCA Conference of Bishops in this extraordinary time. If you don't have a copy of that, please contact the church office and we can get a copy for you for uh, your use in your homes for worship there. And maybe this is for all of us a review of our understanding of Holy Communion. So first of all, what is needed for Holy Communion? Well, what's needed for us in order to have communion is bread. Um, what's needed for us is wine or grape juice. What's needed for us is God's holy word, and what's needed is God's people uh, who are gathered together and desire to receive this holy sacrament. We call it Holy Communion. We call it the Lord's Supper. Uh, we call it sometimes the sacrament of the altar, a very a more formal term as we call it the Holy Eucharist, uh, which in, in Greek means uh, good news. But all of those terms are uh, Holy Communion, uh, which, which we receive. So first, whenever we receive Holy Communion, we do so at the command of Jesus. Jesus tells us to do this. As we find uh, in Holy Scripture, uh, Jesus says, do this. And I'm going to simply read for you from Matthew, the 26th chapter, beginning at verse 26. And hear these words. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body. That's the command of Jesus. Do this. Take, eat. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Again, Jesus' command, drink from it, all of you. He says, I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. It's the word of the Lord. I read for you again uh, from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, the 11th chapter, and beginning at verse 23, and Paul's uh, institution of the Lord's Supper from Jesus. He said, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body that is for you, do this in remembrance of me. It's the command of Jesus, do this. The same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, do this, the command of Jesus, as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The word of the Lord, the command of Jesus for you and me, we do this because Jesus has told us to do so. As Lutherans, our understanding of what a sacrament is, is as we say that there are two, holy baptism and holy communion. And in both of those sacraments, there are three elements. The first, as I just said, is that Jesus commanded that we do this. And so we do it um, at Jesus' word. The second thing that makes a sacrament for us is that in the sacrament, we are promised by God that we are given forgiveness. And given forgiveness, we are given life and salvation as a gift of God. And that always comes to us in these two sacraments. The third thing that makes a sacrament for us is that it's the Word of God that is combined with a physical and earthly element that affirms that Word of God for us. In Holy Baptism, it's the water combined with God's Word. In Holy Communion, it is the bread and wine that is combined with God's Word that affirms of his forgiveness, life, and salvation. In normal times, we receive communion together when we're at worship with friends and family and neighbors, presided over by the pastor of a congregation. 
But recall, if we will, that the, the, the first Lord's Supper was Jesus' last supper with his disciples. He was gathered with them in an upper room on that Thursday night before he was betrayed as he led them together in a meal, uh, the Jewish Passover meal or what's called the Seder. In the very earliest Christian church, the very first Christians celebrated the Lord's Supper in their homes, as we're now able to do. It was in their homes in which they ate together a full meal, and then they also worshipped in their homes. In time, though, controversies erupted about how some were eating and drinking the meal. Some believed that it was magical and that they saved back some bread and wine that they believed had some kind of special powers, like a, a magical medicine if you became ill, uh, there was that they believed there was some magic to it. There were others that believed that the Holy Supper was a privilege for some, reserved for some, but not for everybody. There was controversy because also some saw the sacrament as just eating and drinking without hearing or acknowledging the word of Jesus that in the sacrament comes forgiveness. So when Christian and Christianity was no longer illegal and people could gather together in public worship as a congregation, then that became the norm, presided over by a leader or a pastor in regular order to make sure that Holy Communion was then in the church done rightly. But if we recall how it began, it was Jesus and his friends and his word. Then an emergency, like we are now with COVID-19, in an emergency, any Christian can lead and offer to others. As long as the leader follows the order and uses these words of Jesus, as long as bread and wine or grape juice are used as Jesus did, as long as we believe that we are receiving, as Jesus says, forgiveness and life and salvation, and as long as, when this is all over with, we return in regular time to being together and receiving communion as a congregation in worship. Martin Luther, in his small catechism, asks four questions, and he answers them to help us understand Holy Communion. In the resource that we've prepared for you, and I have a copy of that here, which you should have from uh, your, um, your newsletter as well, the entire section uh, of Luther's catechism about the sacrament of the altar is included. I'm going to review that with you now. So the first question that Martin Luther asks, he says, what is the sacrament of the altar? And he writes this. It's the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and drink. The true body and blood of Jesus Christ with the bread and with the wine. That it truly is, we understand in communion, Christ is present with us, his body and blood in communion. When I have first communion instruction with our kids, um, we have a, a, a very simple question and a very simple answer to help them understand that, and maybe this is helpful for, for all of us. I ask, and I do this in the interviews with the kids, how do we know that it really is Jesus' body and Jesus' blood that we are receiving? That when the server gives you bread and says, this is the body of Christ, what is it? Is it just bread? Is it the body of Christ? Is it both? Of course, the answer is both. It is really Jesus' body uh, in, with, and under the bread. And when the server gives you the wine or the grape juice, it's obviously wine or grape juice, but they say this is the blood of Christ. So what is it? Is it just wine? Is it just the blood of Christ? Is it both? Of course, it is both. And how do we know that that's true, that Jesus really is present when he gives us Holy Communion? Well, the answer is simple. Jesus says so. He says so. He took bread and he gave it to them and he said, this is my body. And he took the cup, he took the wine, and he gave it to him and he said, this is my blood. It is Jesus' word that this is what it is when we receive the bread and wine, the body and blood. So the second question that Luther asks is, what is the benefit of such eating and drinking? And he writes, the words given for you and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin 
Show us that forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation are given to us in the sacrament through these words. Because where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. The benefit of receiving Holy Communion is forgiveness of our sins and life and salvation. As promised by Jesus. And so again, I ask the kids when we have our interviews for First Communion, how do you know that you receive forgiveness when you receive Holy Communion? The answer is Jesus says so. In Matthew 26, do this for the forgiveness of your sins, says Jesus. Even in that first supper, the last supper of Jesus, Judas, the apostle who would go from that supper with Jesus out to betray him, to his death. Even Jesus is, Judas is present there with Jesus and promised forgiveness even in advance of the sin that he will soon commit. It is for all who believe that forgiveness is yours that it actually does come in the Holy Supper. The third question that Luther asks is this. How can bodily eating and drinking do such a great thing? And he answers it saying, Eating and drinking certainly do not do it, but rather the words that are recorded, given for you, and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. These words, when accompanied by the physical eating and drinking, are the essential thing in the sacrament, and whoever believes these very words has what they declare and state, namely, forgiveness of sin. When we believe that This is given for you, that the the blood is shed for you. And when we believe what they say for us, then it gives us exactly what the words say, and that is forgiveness of sins for you. A favorite illustration that I have is from the Fed and Forgiven book that we use with our fifth graders in preparation for Holy Communion. And you maybe can't see all of this, but it's a picture of a father and a child in the bedroom at night, um, having maybe said their prayers and saying good night. And the question is, what's wrong with this picture? Well, in the picture, are there all kinds of things that are wrong. There's a dog down here reading a newspaper. He's wearing snow boots. There's a fish over here in a bird cage. There's a, a horse uh, riding a man in a picture up here. There's a duck flying outside, up, upside down outside. But what's even more wrong with the pictures, and the point is that the father says to his child, He says, good night. I love kids. Good night, he says. I love kids. Well, what's wrong with that is that a a, a parent, when we put our child to bed, we, we don't say, I love kids. We say, I love you. I love you, which is what Holy Communion is for us. It's it's not just that God loves all people. But in Holy Communion, it is affirmed for you here in this bread and wine that they are given as the body and blood of Jesus for you. This is the body of Christ for you. This is the blood of Christ for you. It indeed is for you. The fourth question that Luther asks is, who then receives the sacrament worthily? I'll read that. He says, fasting and bodily preparation are in fact a fine external discipline, but a person who has faith in these words given for you and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins is really worthy and well prepared. However, a person who does not believe these words or doubts them is unworthy and unprepared because the words for you require truly believing hearts. So who is worthy and ready to receive the sacrament? Who is ready to receive and does receive the forgiveness that Jesus promised? It's you. It's you when you simply eat and drink as Jesus commands. And it's you when you believe that you are receiving what the forgiveness of sins that he promises for you in these words that you say. That That you hear what is promised to you, that forgiveness, and you receive it, believing is what makes you worthy and makes it effective. So tonight, I offer for you this explanation of Holy Communion. I'm at a table. Much like maybe Jesus was at with his disciples, um, much like you have in your homes a larger table, 
And if you gather up these things, bread, doesn't have to be unleavened bread, but just bread of some kind, wine or grape juice of any kind, the words of Jesus that you will read to one another, and, and they're on this resource for you, you may want to, on your table, if you have a place that you're doing family worship these days, have a candle or a cross, but they're, they're not needed. And then in the context of a worship service, I encourage you, you can begin that this Easter Sunday in the televised service that we're going to have for you, a time to pause and serve Holy Communion, and then you can resume again. Or maybe even for your own home worship where you read a word of God from Scripture that you will do at home the very same thing that we do at worship together with an altar, which is just what is standing behind me, an altar, a bigger, more visible table than you would have maybe even in your own homes. At this point, I'm going to move the elements, the bread and the wine, uh, to the altar, and I'm going to read for you the resource there that you would use in your homes for home communion. So this is what you might do in your homes for Holy Communion with your family. Use the brief order for the Lord's Supper in our homes that's part of that sacraments, sacraments in a time of emergency uh, that we sent to you. And find a leader, uh, one of the family members, doesn't even have to be an adult, um, but somebody who will read the leader parts and do this. The leader says, the Lord be with you, and your family responds, and also with you. Then your leader says these important words, which are the very same thing that a pastor says every time we have Holy Communion when we're together, the words of what happened on that night straight from Scripture. And the leader says this. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then you take your cup of wine and you would say, Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then you would say the Lord's Prayer together, which I would now offer, and you may join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That point, as you would see in your resource, that your leader now distributes the bread and wine to one another and very importantly, with these words, that when you give the bread, you say to the person that you are giving the bread to, the body of Christ given for you. And importantly, when you give them the wine, you would say those words to them, the blood of Christ shed for you. And when you've all communed, including to now commune the leader with the same words, then offer this blessing to one another. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in faith. Amen. When you do that, in your homes, trust that, as Jesus tells us and promises, where two or three are gathered, he is there with us. And trust what those words of Jesus say to you, that this is the body of Christ given for you, that this is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Be safe. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Yeah. 